After the 2022 sailing season came to a close, Paolo and I flew to Madeira. Of all the countries in the world, why Madeira? I think we wanted to go to an island nation or territory. Really, it was a toss-up between the islands of Madeira and the Azores. We chose Madeira. As a Portuguese territory, we weren't all that unfamiliar with the island, but we certainly didn't grasp the breathtaking landscapes, stunning mountainscapes and cliffside views, houses perched on the side of volcanic mountains, and lush terrace gardens until we set foot on the island. This is day one of our Madeira trip. Beautiful view. And right now, we are approaching Kushal. On our first day, we drove from the airport to Funchal, where our hotel was located, to see if we can check in and drop off our luggage. Without any idea what to do next, we took the coastal route heading west, and just by chance, we arrived at the fishing port of Camara do Lobos, where we stopped for lunch. We stopped at the first cafe that we saw with an excellent view of the harbor. We're just having lunch at this little cafe. Yeah, having lunch. Um. Killing time because we can't uh, check in until 2 o'clock. And so we took the uh, rental car and we just drove along this coastal route in Fuenchal. Drove out of the city and within 10 minutes we're out of the city. So this is Camara dos Los Bos. Remember at this point we were hungry and feeling jet lagged. We barely knew where we were. Camera de Lobos. Having sardines, uh, very traditional in Portugal to have sardines. And uh, this is the first time I'm having sardines with french fries. Normally it's just uh, baked potatoes, olive oil, and salad obviously, tomato salad especially, and uh, cucumber and lettuce. But uh, french fries, it's uh, that's new to me. It's Try the Madeirian way of eating. Yeah, um, when I asked the, uh, the waitress to see if she could bake some potatoes, she said, mm. Mm. Okay, so, never mind. Fries or potatoes, it didn't matter. We would have eaten anything on that menu. <laughs> After lunch, a short stroll along the pier and along the colorful small fishing boats on the hard for the winter. So I was just talking to uh, one of the boat owners over here at this Camera uh, um, de Lobos uh, port and um, I was just asking him uh, if, whether or not they would go out fishing to uh, get all these boats over here. I don't see any activity and he tells me well now it's winter time so there's not much fishing activity going on for these small boats only the bigger boats um, and uh, he says right now he's just basically doing maintenance because he's got an inspection coming along and uh, he's got to get the, the boat uh, ready for that inspection um, at the same time uh, I also asked him like what kind of fish you fish over here and he says uh, scarab which is black scarab which is a very long um, uh, fish black fish almost eel-like but but more meaty not, not like an eel at all uh it's very it's one of the best fishes that he says we can have over here so <clears throat> have you heard that i uh i'm going to try and make an effort to uh when i go out for a restaurant to eat out at the restaurant that i'm going to have some uh, scarab continuing along the coastal route we had time to drive towards cabo Girão, passing banana trees grown along the highway the drive up to Cabo Juron was a good opportunity to test the Ford Kuga SUV rental car with its six gears and powerful engine. With Madeira known for its extremely steep roads, this car should provide us with peace of mind.
Along the way, there were lookout points that gave a bird's eye view of Funchal, Camara du Lobos, and the Atlantic Ocean. Finally, we made it to the skywalk on the cliffs of Cabo Jurão. Jutting out of the side of the cliff, 580 meters above sea level, the glass walkway offers incredible views of the Madeira coastline. So here we are, Cabo Jurão. Uh, it's basically a lookout look point, it's got a glass floor. Uh, we can sit right over at the edge, it's just a straight drop down. And uh, you can see right down to the water to the water line down, down below. Uh, there's nothing obstructing your view. Um, it's quite a lookout. Then it was time to return to Funchal as the day was ending for a good night's rest because tomorrow we'll be busy with touring the old town. The next morning dawned bright and sunny. If today's fine weather passes for winter in Madeira, we gladly take it. We set out towards the historic center of Funchal, the capital city. But the gardens and architecture and high-end luxury hotels along the way kind of distracted us from going straight to Old Town. But we didn't mind. We had no agenda for today. Soon enough, we arrived at the seaside boulevard Avenida do Mar with boats docked at the marina and two cruise ships docked at the cruise terminal. And of course, who doesn't want to have their photo taken by the statue of the famous Madeiran footballer or soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo? And don't forget to stroll by the famous Madeira sign, a must do when you're here. Then we crossed the street towards the cable car entrance. It was cool to see the cable cars overhead, but we opted to skip it and come back to it later. Spoiler alert, we didn't. We just ran out of time. We walked along Rua de Santa Maria, a labyrinth of narrow cobbled streets. The doors here have been transformed by the Open Doors Art Project thanks to the work of local artists. Restaurant tables arranged for lunch and menu stands fought for spaces with postcards and souvenir stands. Then it was time for a lunch break. Paolo went looking for grilled scabbard fish at the restaurants, but had to settle for a fried version. This is scabbard, and it's uh, well known in this area. The fishermen at the pier last night said that this is the... Uh, he said it, it's a, the best fish the best, you can have here. The best fish in Madeira. After lunch, our city tour continued. In 1893, Francisco Rock da Silva decided to found the very first fine biscuit production unit in Madeira Island. This is it, the Fabrica Santo Antonio. So you said that the uh, portal is made of volcanic rock. Yeah, that's a volcanic rock. These, uh, Openings, the jams, 
the windows and doors. And it's uh, it's noticeable everywhere we go in the old buildings. I'm not sure if they still use it for today. Like, uh, let's say if they want to make a new building, I'm pretty sure they could still get rock uh, cut out for it. It would be expensive, very much like granite or uh, marble. Although it may seem like we were following the lady in royal purple, we didn't do it intentionally, but she led us into a plaza called Praça do Carmo, surrounded by some lovely examples of 18th century architecture and modern apartments. There were restaurants and cafes where you can grab a coffee or meal and mix with the locals. On our city walk, it was just so fascinating to see buildings, especially old buildings, perched on volcanic rocks with flowers, trees, and florals taking root from places you would never expect. Afternoon was also spent at the Mercado dos Lavradores Farmer's Market. Madeira's temperate climate and fertile volcanic soil produce a great variety of fruits and vegetables and tropical flowers. I was surprised by how delicious Madeira-grown bananas are. I imagine it's the effects of volcanic soil nutrients on taste and flavor. Later, we stopped for mint tea and espresso coffee at the cafe just outside the entrance to the market, and for a bit of people watching too. We returned to Avenida do Mar while we waited for the city bus to take us back to where we started from early this morning at Estrada Monumental. <laughs> we stopped at the Pinko Doshi grocery store located near our hotel to pick up snacks and supplies. So how often you get to go shopping in a shopping in a grocery store, and uh, you come out and face the face the ocean. Right out there is the um, Atlantic. Nice, feel that sea breeze coming in. We then walked along the Lido Promenade to check out the bathing complex. Although by this time there was hardly anyone taking advantage of the salt water pools. So you come over here and they actually have a listing over there of what the temperature is, water temperature, low tide and high tide, and um, you can enjoy yourself right, right, at the, uh, right by the ocean. And if you do what, you can actually even dive into the ocean. There's a diving board over there, a diving tower. And swim right into the water. You just have to be careful. You, I would recommend that you're a strong swimmer because there could be a, a big undercurrent and what that will, can tow you out to the Atlantic Ocean. Or throw you to the rocks. Or as Paolo here said, it can throw you into the rocks. We capped off the day with dinner at Restaurante Sa Terra Espero, ordered the traditional skewered beef and chicken on the stick. At this point, we realized that we could have ordered one entree between the two of us. Individual portions were quite generous. How could we leave room for dessert? Dessert was an orange cake for the two of us. Join us for the next episode as we hiked Verada da Ponta do São Lorenzo and took a dip at the Porto Moniche Natural Swimming Pools.
If you haven't subscribed yet, please tap the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of the next episode. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.